In this video, I'll be explaining how to find the perimeter of two overlapping circles given the equations of those circles. Also, there is now a Maths Explained Discord. I'll explain more about that at the end of the video. So in this question, we're asked to find the perimeter of the shaded region and we're given the equations of circle one and circle two. So to find this length around the outside, this is going to be one arc or the major arc of the large circle and the major arc of the small circle. So we're going to have to find arc lengths. The way you find an arc length of a circle is you need the angle. So if we draw in some lines here from the center to where the circles intersect, in order to find this arc length, we'll need this angle in here. And similarly for the small circle, if we draw in those two lines to where they intersect, we'll need this angle as well. To find that larger angle, what I want to do is find this smaller angle in here. And to find that angle, I'm actually going to create a, a smaller triangle. So if I draw a line between the centers of the circles, I create a triangle in here. Now I know the lengths of all of the sides of this triangle uh, because I can read those from the equations of the circles. So the equation for C1 is x squared plus y squared equals 36. That tells me the radius is the square root of 36. So this radius here from the center to the circumference will be six. The radius for C2 will be the square root of 16. That's four. And I also know the distance between the centers because I know the coordinates of the centers. Now, if you're not sure how I'm getting all of these details from these equations, you'll have to do some research into the equations of circles. So I'm going to leave that up to you, but once you've worked with equations of circles, you know when you have x squared plus y squared equals something, the center of that circle will be at zero, zero. And the center of this circle will be at eight, zero. Okay, just reading from those equations, I get all those details. That means the length between the centers is from zero to eight. So this length, the red line is going to be eight. And now I have all of the side lengths of that triangle. I can work out any angle in that triangle. So I want to find this angle in here. And eventually also I want to find this angle. So I'll call this one theta and this one alpha. And to find that angle, I can use the cosine rule. So the cosine rule says the cosine of theta will be equal to uh, b squared plus c squared take a squared all over 2bc. So b and c are the adjacent sides. It doesn't ma matter which one is which and a is the opposite side. So a in this formula will be four and b and c are six and eight. So plugging those in then b, let's just say that's six, six squared plus eight squared take four squared over two times six times eight, that's going to equal the cosine of theta. So then we can find the angle uh, using the inverse cosine. So theta is going to be the inverse cosine of this, whatever this is. So let's go ahead and plug that into a calculator. So it's going to be the inverse cosine of 0 0.875, 0 0.875. So let's go ahead and work that out. That is 0 0.50536 and so on. Okay, so we have that angle, uh, theta, that was that one. Now I want that entire angle. These two parts are going to be the same because these two triangles are congruent. Okay, so that entire angle is going to be two theta. Now to find this larger angle of this major arc, uh, let's call that beta. Beta is going to be the angles in a circle. By the way, I'm using radians here, not degrees. Uh, so the, the number of radians in a circle or around a point is two pi. So beta is going to be two pi take two lots of theta. So two pi take two theta, meaning that entire angle there. Okay, and then we can work out beta. So let's go ahead and plug that in. I get 5.272 and so on. So 5.272, okay. And then I can go ahead and find the arc length here, this major arc. So in radians, when you're working in radians, the arc length, so the major arc of circle one, when you're using radians, it's the angle times the radius. Okay, so we have the angle beta. This is going to be 5.27, approximately multiplied by the radius, which is six. Okay, so then let's plug that in. 
So take that previous answer, multiply by six, and I get 31.63, and so on, 31.63. Okay, so we have this length around the, the major arc of the first larger circle. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the smaller circle. Firstly, I want alpha. Uh, now I don't need to use the cosine rule again. I could use the sine rule. Possibly it's slightly quicker, I don't know. Well, you could use the cosine rule again if if you prefer that, but we can use the sine rule. So sine of alpha over the opposite side, which is six, uh, is equal to the sine of theta. Theta was 0.5. 0536 over its opposite side which is 4 so then alpha is going to be the inverse sine of 6 multiplied by the sine of 0.50536 over 4 okay let's go ahead and work that out so I get 0.8127 and so on so 0.8127555 six okay so that's alpha and to work out this larger angle let's call that gamma gamma is going to be the same thing as we did here the number of radians in a circle subtract two lots of alpha because we want that entire angle there so two alpha two pi take two alpha and I get four point six five seven and so on four point six five seven six seven Okay, so that's that larger angle and to find the major arc of the smaller circle. Again, use the arc length formula in radians. So that's the angle. So gamma times the radius, 4.657 multiplied by 4, which is the radius of the smaller circle. Let's go ahead and calculate that. I get 18.63 and so on. Okay, so I have this major arc, I have this major arc, all I need to do is add them together to get the perimeter. So the total perimeter is going to be 31.63 approximately plus 18.63. Let's calculate that then. I get 50.26 which I'm going to round off to 50.3. So that's accurate to one decimal place. Okay, so that is the uh, perimeter of these two overlapping circles. Now a quick check you can do is to find the circumference of the two circles. So C1 circumference uh, which is 2 pi r. So let's go ahead and work that out. I get 37.699, roughly 38. This is just a quick check. So I'm just going to round that off to 38. And the circumference of the smaller circle I get about 25. Okay, so compare that to your answers to the arc lengths. Clearly the arc lengths need to be less than the circumferences, so that's a quick check. If these are larger than the circumference of the circle, you know you've gone wrong somewhere in your calculations. Also, they should be larger than half the circumference, just based on how the shape is uh, you know, constructed. So. This, these answers should be, well, for example, 31.6, it's less than 38 and larger than half of 38. So I can be somewhat confident that at least I haven't made a major mistake. Uh, so that's a quick check you could do in an exam situation or whatever, just to make sure you haven't made any major mistakes. So anyways, I get a final answer of 50.3 for this particular question, and that's the general approach I would take. Uh, I'm sure there are different ways to answer this type of question. Let me know in the comments if you ha had a different method. Uh, but there you go. Hopefully you found that helpful. Now onto the details about the Maths Explain Discord. Firstly, if you don't know what Discord is, it's basically a, a chat server. They have lots of different educational uh, servers. Uh, for example, Brian McLogan, who is another Maths YouTuber, has his own server. There's lots of different educational science servers. So it's really good. Uh, if you're a student, if you want help on particular topics or advice on finding information, you know, sometimes you go on Google or YouTube and you can't find specifically what you're looking for. Uh, Discord's really good for that. And if you want to join the Maths Explained Discord, uh, you can get help on any specific questions or topics and things like that. And I'll be on there most evenings if you want to 
you know, leave a message like or leave a picture of a problem. Uh, you know, I can help out with that or somebody else can help you with that. And so if you want to join, you'll need to become a member. Now, if you just want to join for one month, consider it like a donation of uh, four pounds, then you don't have to stay a member. What I'm thinking of this as is something I can offer you if you want to leave a donation. If you've ever found my videos helpful, uh, you can join the Discord. Uh, just be a member for one month. You can cancel your membership and then you can stay in the Discord and use that for help with anything maths related. And so previously, I've been receiving emails from various people and this kind of avoids all of the annoyance of emails. So it's going to be much easier to be in the Discord and answering questions there rather than through email. I'm not going to be answering any emails, uh, you know, with questions on things like that. So yeah, become a member even just for one month. Get into the Discord if you've got any questions or anything. Uh, jump in there. It's going to be hopefully really useful for you. Okay, so there you go. That's about it for this video. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.